I want to start with the idea of the goalposts because I don't know about you, but I, I have to say this. I understand why we turned off our booming economy, our record employment rate, our record Dow, our record wage gains, the envy of the world. We turned it off. Do you know why we turned it off? And if you say we turned it off because of the coronavirus, that's actually not true. We turned it off because we had models. The coronavirus hadn't really happened yet in this country. We hadn't really had the surge, the cases, the uh, predicted overwhelming of our health care and other systems uh, that make up our daily normal. And, and, and we shut it off because we had models that told us what it would do. We are now in the period of time those models predicted. And the people who made the models are changing them. The University of Washington IHME model that the federal government uses and the state of Texas uses and the city of San Antonio uses have cut their projected numbers almost in half. They overestimated hospitalizations by multiples. They overestimated the number of ICU beds by multiples. They overestimated the number of ventilators needed by 40 times. And you've heard now in the last couple of days that states have surpluses of ventilators. And some of the western states that are doing very well are sending their ventilators east. So the model or models are off. They are lowering their projections of death. They're lowering their projections of infections. Remember, we started with a number that said we could be as high as 2.2 million people dying in the United States, and that's a number that they should never have even put out because it was presumed on doing nothing. If we didn't shut down, if we didn't social distance, if we didn't do all the things we are doing. And then they went from 2.2 million, they said, well, it might be as bad as 200,000 or 240,000 or 150,000. And now that model, you know what that model is now down to? 81,000. And that's still an incredible high number. But we're talking about having done incredible things to do incredible damage to our country, to its people, based on models. And we took the models to heart because we care about people. And we wanted to save lives, and we did. But now we have to talk about saving livelihoods. Now we have to talk about rescuing people economically. And here's what I'm worried about. Have you noticed every time we come up to a goalpost, the goalpost gets moved? Well, we're going to need two more weeks. Well, we're going to need, uh, this is going to be a very bad week. This is our Pearl Harbor moment. I don't want to hear about our Pearl Harbor moment. We fought back at Pearl Harbor. We were literally fighting during the Pearl Harbor attack. We didn't sit home. America didn't shelter in place. We fought back. We were bombing the country that attacked us at Pearl Harbor within five months of Pearl Harbor. So... We need to work, because that's who we are. That's what we do. Now, I'm not saying this for me. I am working. I have no complaints. I could do the show like this indefinitely. It, it's technically and, and so forth uh, very, very easy to do, and I appreciate all the support I'm getting in doing it. I'm not complaining about me. I am working. But it worries me to see people, quote-unquote, getting used to the new normal. I hate that term, by the way. We're telling people, think about this now, we're telling people, stay home. It's cool to stay home. It's fun to stay home. You should just bake sourdough bread instead of going to work. All my life and all your life, we heard the opposite. We were told you should work. You have to work. You need to work. You need to earn. There's dignity in it. It's the right thing to do. Unless you can't, you must. And then I wonder about the reopening of the economy. So I worry that we keep moving the goalposts. And then I say, well, at some point we're going to tell people you may 
come out of your house. You may go to the stores again. You may return to your non-essential job. I wonder if people will. I think we've panicked people. I wonder if people, when they're told they may come back, actually will. Now, I'm going to stand by. I've predicted on this show many times that we, will, we, we would have, we should have, a robust recovery, that there would be a lot of pent-up demand and liquidity, and people are just impatient to get back to their favorite restaurant or to get back to see a new movie. or to get, but, but I wonder sometimes, have we scared people so much that they won't actually do it when we tell them, go ahead and do it? And then we heard Dr. Fauci the other day say life may never entirely return to normal. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to say life may never return to normal? Dr. Fauci is a scientist. In his world, the ultimate achievement here would be a vaccine for the coronavirus. And we're told that's a long way off. But, you know, I want to point out it may also never happen. There are many viruses for which there is no vaccine. Including, by the way, the one that made Dr. Fauci famous. So many viruses never get a vaccine, and we still go back to normal. So I'm all for stockpiling and having a medicine chest, American supply chain. I'm all for hand washing. I want us to do the, the things that make sense, that we've learned from this pandemic uh, we should be smarter. We should do things smarter after this. I hope that we will. I'm not suggesting we put this all out of our minds, but I do think it's important to stop moving the goalposts and get back to work. And I think it's important to remember that we stopped all this. We shut this down on a model. And the models have not been right nationally, and the models have not been right here in Texas. Now, here's a story um, saying Texas cities have yet to see the surge in Chinese coronavirus infections projected even in the hot spots like Dallas, where county officials have the harshest restriction. Patient volumes have dropped at many medical centers. We're now at record low numbers, says an emergency room physician in the Dallas area, because people are afraid to come in for legitimate complaints. Think about this. He says, appendicitis has disappeared overnight we have no cases now it doesn't mean people's appendixes are not flaring up or bursting it means they're not going to the hospital when it does when they do that's very dangerous and he's worried about it we now know that texas has more than ample capacity to handle a surge in hospitalization the number of beds available now is well more than it looks like we're going to need and they had a surge capacity way beyond that Looks like we won't need it. It's good to be prepared, and I'm glad that we don't need those things. But again, I just want to point out, this was modeling. This was um, basically the best guess of some experts. We shut down a $20 trillion economy, and now we are telling the people who are hurting, who are feeling real pain, well, we don't know. It might never go back to normal. Well, you'll just have to wait. Well, we'll let you know. Well, it might be a couple more weeks. It might be a month. It might be two months. We can't do that. You can't do that to the American people. They deserve better than that. In fact, not only do they deserve better than that, but they deserve a great deal for how compliant they've been. Even the experts are amazed at how good a job you're doing with the instructions they gave you. They actually didn't think you'd be this good at it. They thought you'd be kind of thick-headed or, or slow or resistant, and you've outperformed their best expectations in terms of the mitigation of the virus. That's all to our credit, of course, but it's time to get back to work, or at least it's time to set a time. And when you set that time, mean it, stick to it, let people plan on it, let people bank on it, let businesses start to ramp up ordering supplies or getting their windows washed or putting their signs out or whatever it is they're going to do to get back to business because that is what the American people have earned.